Hello, a great welcome to Idea Statica tutorial. Myself, Jarajan P. This is tutorial number 14. Here I will demonstrate the modeling and analysis of a typical bolted column bracket connection. The bracket connection used in the tutorial is shown here. In this case, the bolts are subjected to both tension and shear due to the applied shear and an out of plane moment. So now let us start Idea Statica tutorial number 14. So let us start from a blank project. So the, here we write down bracket 2, bracket 2, and this is designed for, for an out of plane moment. Out of plane moment. moment and uh, there's two surfaces we will keep. And regarding the bolt, we will select for uh, M20. So we can have M28.8. It's okay. So let us create project and the design will be performed as per uh, Eurocode 3. So let us start adding the different components as well as the numbers. So we'll start with first the column, and the column in this case will be an HEF450. So let us choose for HEA and it will be HEA450. So this is my HEA450. So we'll select it. Okay. It's okay. And uh, let us just change the parameters to keep it a, a column. So continuous. And we'll keep the gamma angle as 90 degrees. So, so that is vertical. So this is 90 degrees. And all other parameters will be kept the same, we will not change it, and uh, the process will be considered at the node. So, so the member is made. Now, let us start uh, applying uh, the various manufacturing operations in order to create the stiffening plate on the flange side and also the bracket. So, let us straight away start with uh, the manufacturing operation. So, so here, note to generate. The flange plate, what we do is that we straight away go for uh, the stiffening plate option, and uh, you can see that it is already generated, so we need to just edit it. So we will keep it as S2 sort 5, and the thickness in this case will keep it as say 20 mm. So this is my 20 mm, and it's a rectangular, and uh, the B1 and B2 will keep it as 375 each. So this is my 375, and this is also 375. 375 and then we can keep h1 and h2 these are all the predetermined values we can keep it as a 150 each so that is 150 here and then this is 150 150 and ensure that we want to have it on the flat so accordingly we need to apply some rotations so here we will keep the x position as 230 so that comes on the flange and then finally rotate it so this our uh, y will keep it as 90 degrees 90 degrees 90 degrees so as you can see that already the, you know the plate that is attached to the flange it is generated through the stiffening plate command now let us add the other manufacturing operations uh, so that we will have uh, the bracket plate so we'll just copy this so we'll copy sp1 and uh, we want to now model the bracket component so let us start editing all these parameters. So here we'll have the 275 and the thickness will be 20. And in this case, uh, 375 will keep the same. And uh, for a speed to a bracket, so we have it as a, so this H1 will keep it as a 500. H1 will keep it as 400. And uh, the other H2 will keep it as a zero. Zero. And then we need to rotate it. So we'll, we'll align it along X0 to 30mm only. 220 will keep us 220 because we have to reduce one thickness so 220 mm and uh, we have it as a rx equal to 90 degrees rx will be 90 degrees 90 and uh, my r set will be minus 90 r set will be minus 90 okay so so let us have it as this will be so rx 90 and r y we have to keep it as zero so, so as you can see that okay uh, this uh, bracket plate is already modeled now let us uh, start uh, uh, having uh, the weld between uh, the two plate components so let us go for the command uh, the plate cut command in order to generate the weld 
So we'll add another manufacturing operation. So that will be a plate cut command, cut off plate command. So let us add it. So we will keep it as a cut and zero. And uh, then what we do is that this would be my member SP2, SP2, okay. And uh, then here the, I will keep it as SP1, SP1. So this has to, we have to select it as a plate. So this is my SP1 and uh, we'll keep the weld as a heat amount. So this will increase it to eight. So and it will be a fillet weld on both sides. You can say that it is already applied. So now we have connected the two plates using the weld assembly using the picker command. Now let us uh, start populating the bolts uh, required to connect the flange plate to the column flange. And this will be done to another manufacturing operation known as the grid of bolts. So we'll add the operation. So this is my grid of bolts. Okay, so let us start. We have uh, M20, we'll choose M20 bolts for this. So M20, and this is okay. So let us start. So this is the uh, anchor grid manufacturing operation. So let us start uh, the, the, the generation of the bolts through the various parameters. So it will be a bolts and attack count will be two. And we want M1 here, so this will give it as a member. And M1, we want it to be the bottom flange, and also we want to connect it to the SP1, so that's okay. And the fastener will be M28.8. And let, let us start populating the various rows. Protein will be kept as 00, zero. and the rows will keep it as minus 75, 150. So this is my minus 75, minus 75, and uh, and it will be 150. So you can start seeing the position of the bolts here in the sketch. Okay, and then the positions let us have it as a minus 300. So this will give us a minus 300, minus 300, and we'll like have the five rows. So we accordingly, we'll keep it as 150 into four. So that does mean that all the bolts are being generated. So the Member is now if we begin, let us have a quick look on the model. So just to see that yes, we have got the bolts and we have got the bracket. And now it is important that the load has to be applied. Now to make us possible to apply the load, what is done is the required load will be applied on this bracket plate through a, a member, okay, which is being not connected to this vertical bracket plate. So this is being done through. Uh, addition first of all we have to add one vertical member at this location so that uh, we can apply the vertical load through this point so let us just add the members so this is a member and uh, in this member we'll keep it as a, a circular hollow section so we need to apply another member over here okay so let us add this one as a circular one and this dimension will be chosen, chosen as a hundred with a with a thickness of 10 mm and then we have to arrange it so that it can properly fit at the required location so you can see that this uh, this need to be now shifted to the top of this one so let us start uh, so this will be obviously kept as the ended one so let us keep it as ended ended and then let us start uh, adjusting the angles so gamma has to be obviously 90 degrees and the EX, we have to adjust the positions through the various eccentricities. Now the EX in this example will give it as a 100 mm, and that will be 100 mm. And then we'll have the EZ as minus 650. We'll have it as a minus 650, so this is minus 650. Okay, so as you can see that, yes, it is being properly shifted to the right location. And uh, we'll keep all this uh, uh, load called model type and the forces in the load, everything the same. So now it is important that we connect this vertical member to this vertical bracket through the welding and that will be again done through what we call as the cut operation. So let us start adding the cut operation. So we'll just add operation and uh, this will be my cut. Okay, so we can start applying it and here we want it to be M2 and uh, M2 and that is to be connected to the SP2. So we'll choose it as SP2, so this is my SP2, and uh, then uh, we'll keep it as uh, the surface here, and this will be my surface, okay, the surface, and uh, the offset will be kept as zero, and all welds 
will be kept as uh, the foramen here. So this is good enough for us. So we can see that uh, it is being properly connected and welded to the bracket. So so the entire model looks something like this. So we can say that we can just rotate it. Yes. So now what is required is uh, we need to apply a small notch on this uh, uh, vertical bracket so that we can spray, save some material. So let us uh, ap apply uh, some uh, uh, modification to the SP2 plate so that we can have uh, some kind of a bevel uh, cut at one corner. So what we can do is we'll choose the SP2 and let's uh, start uh, the editor session and we'll go straight away for the bevel and the bevel will choose the proper dimensions. We'll keep it as A is equal to 500 mm, 500 mm and then B is equal to 375 be equal to 375, 375 and uh, in the corner we can choose the, the two so that should be good enough for us so that is applied okay so you can see that uh, it's being now uh, properly applied so we can have uh, yes so now we have the bracket properly molded and all the plates are being connected using the required wells and uh, the load will be applied through this uh, CHS number. So now let's straight away go for uh, adding the load effects. So we'll add the loads and uh, we'll be applying a load of uh, say minus 350 kilonewton. So we'll keep it as a minus 350. So now our model is ready for uh, analysis or the calculation and we can start uh, reviewing uh, the various results such as the strain distribution, the forces in the bores, as well as the stresses in the wells, etc. So now the analysis is complete. Now let's uh, quickly review the forces in the bowls, the plane strain distribution, etc. Et so we'll uh, quickly go for the plastic strain and uh, then we will mesh it. And here we can see that uh, uh, we have uh, some strains accumulated from this uh, diagram. It is uh, accumulated near the flanges. Okay, near the flanges uh, and uh, also near the bolts. Okay, there's a minor uh, excess strain that is getting accumulated here, and uh, we also have uh, some kind of a strain accumulation uh, near uh, the location where uh, the vertical tube is connected to the bracket. So let us quickly review the distribution as far as the plates are concerned. So we can say that it is. Uh, so it's a 0.1, say 0.1% of the strain, and these are the critical zones. We have got the largest strains, okay, in the plate. And uh, let us quickly go for uh, the bolt forces. And uh, the bolts, as expected, uh, we have got a very good distribution. That is, uh, you can say that here, uh, let us just quickly see how the force in the bolts vary. So we can say that, as expected, the bolt. The tension in the lower row of bolts are very less, so it is 2.2 here, and we can see that it is 2. Point. Just I mean, just zoom it so that it is easy for identification, and we can say that it is 23.9 here. Let's just keep it as 23.9, and then we can see that it is uh, as far as the topmost bolt is concerned. Here we can say that this is a bolt. The tension is maximum 103.6, and we can see that the utility ratio for the set bolt is also maximum, that's 87.3, that's reported here. Now, regarding the wells, uh, we find that uh, almost all the wells are uh, taken up to nearly, say, 98 percentage. And for example, if we select this one, so this means that uh, here the weld that is connecting the vertical bracket to the flange or to the flange plate, it is critical. And the same is also true for uh, the weld that is uh, used to uh, connect the vertical member uh, to the bracket. For example, if you see here, here also we find that there is uh, a strain accumulation in the welds as well. So now let's quickly go for uh, the equivalent stress distribution. So we can say that here, as expected, we have uh, the maximum stresses. 
getting accumulated uh, near to near to the top portion of the flange when we find that the stresses are larger okay it is because of uh, the possible uh, uh, yielding uh, of uh, this uh, flange plate and also we find that the stresses are also critical uh, near the boards and uh, compared to the second row the top row is a critical one and further we find that as far as the bracket is concerned uh, we find that uh, the stresses are getting critical at the lowermost portion so that is being identified by this around screwing up to say 200 so that's all about the review of the results so uh, please do subscribe to the channel uh, because uh, uh, we are going to load uh, again uh, the fresh set of uh, tutorials uh, that will be really interest to you and also for practicing structural engineers and uh, at the end of uh, probably say another 10 tutorials uh, we will start loading uh, okay the earthquake resilient uh, steel connections uh, which are uh, designed and sized to the idea statica so please do subscribe to the channel and we expect a very good level of communication between us uh, that uh, instills a lot of confidence to us and also it improves the quality of our presentation as well so that's all for the day so thanks a lot for uh, listening